This punk group wants to get your attention, so they take off their clothes because they want to be heard. That's because they're angry. Angry about date rape, incest, and violence against women. Today you'll meet rock music rebels with a cause. Their music is raunchy, racy, and full of rage. Their message is pure social protest. Later we'll meet another musician with a mission. She's with the controversial rap group, Bitches With Problems. And we'll talk with the queen of the rock video girls. She uses sex to sell her message, but she says she's a feminist. First, please welcome Gene Smith, Leslie Ma, and Christina Favretto. Good to have you here. Fans in the audience. Okay. For those of you who haven't heard your music, it is aggressive, it's angry, it's sometimes full of profanity. Is that part of the, the statement you want to make? I think it can be used a little bit to maybe shock people. I don't use it so much. Sometimes I'll use it in a quote, the things that men have said to me. Uh, so I'm just relating things that maybe are hard for women to say. Sometimes you feel a certain degree of shame if someone attacks you verbally on the street and says, oh, you're a this, or, you know, giving you uh, something that is hurtful inside. I think it's good to communicate those things with other women to let it be known within society that this is happening and it's been happening for a long time and it continues to happen and it's unacceptable. Okay, but if you use it liberally in your songs, is there a danger that people won't hear the message because they're alienated by the use of those kinds of, um, I don't know, well, dirty they can, words? Then they can listen to, you know, women's folk music. There's music out there that's safe and, you know, and, and sweet and pretty that maybe has some social messages in it, but, you know, that's not really the type of people that I'm communicating to. Okay, so that's why, that's why you use that kind of language? Well, I don't use a lot of profanity in my day-to-day -day life. I just don't. I find there are other ways to say things besides swearing. But when you're on stage, there's a certain amount of adrenaline, and also, I think, um, an aggressiveness that's in me comes out on stage that doesn't come out in everyday life. I feel a lot of power up there, and I feel this is where my message can be heard. Um, guys use it all the time, and, and most of the top 40 bands use what I consider worse than profanity. They use extensive and continual sexism. And it's there, this message of, of you know, the exaltation of being a bimbo is, is just there every day at MTV. You can watch it. What's worse? Um, women being portrayed as airheads and uh, sex objects or a few good expletives, you know? Okay, so another, what, you agree with her? She's, she's laughing. I think, um, real, I think it's a real overemphasis on this uh, use of language. I think people are squelched and kept quiet and really suppressed in a lot of ways. Some of them are not so subtle. Other ways are, are very much on the surface, and I think people come to accept that. I guess I don't want to belabor this point. It's just that in reading the lyrics, um, well, now whose lyrics are you talking about? I read about all of your lyrics. You have a song called "Water Cuts My Hand," right. and you have a song called uh, "Frat Pig." Yeah, Frat Pig, right? I see. I'm paying attention. And you have a song called "I Hate You." Yeah, which is about. But that's the only one. <laughs> well, but profanity. this is about. This brings up another another thing, though, which is, um, you know, some people hear your music and they think that you hate men. You hate men. No, I don't hate men. My boyfriend's here in the audience, and, and I like a lot of them. They're very interesting to talk to. I work with them. Um, <laughs> sometimes. I like men fine. Um, but this is a song, this is a song about a personal experience. And, and sometimes when I'm minding my own business on the tee, reading a book, I really don't want someone to sit next to me and put his hand on my thigh and say something which has happened. And I feel that how do I counteract to this, short of, you know, shooting him? Um, I can talk about it, I can express it, and I can make it known. And one of the reasons I was a performance artist, I didn't want to preach to the converted anymore of this little artsy audience dressed just, dressed just like me, who thought just like me. If I went out into the rock clubs, there'd be a lot of boys there from BC, there'd be boy, uh, Boston College, there would be uh, jocks who come to listen to rock music who are not probably all that close-minded and who could listen and go, yeah, I didn't think of it in that perspective before. Okay. And I think people respond to expletives. 
But some people, again, some people respond negatively to expletives, and I, you know, if sometimes if you're that narrow in the language that maybe you turn people off, that's all. Well, some people respond negatively to Marilyn Quayle's message of family values, and yet they're in power. <laughs> Whoa, guess she told me, huh? I think that's a good place to take a break. Audience, you want to ask questions and make some comments? We'll do that when we come back. We'll be back. from the group Bitches with Problems. Please welcome Tanisha Michelle. Oh, look at this. What is this? What is this? <laughs> the music was kind of funky. That intro was kind of funky, so I was getting into it. OK, this is good. All right. <laughs> Let me ask you straight off. Memorable name for this group, Bitches with Problems. Have you gotten a lot of flack about that name? Yes, um, well, it's just like there are some women who call themselves bitches and there's other ones who go, if you call me a bitch, I will do such and such and such a thing to you. So, you know, you have both sides all the time. And how do you define bitch? Well, we spell it, we spell it B-Y-T-C-H-E-S. It stands for beautiful, young, talented, college honeys and sh That's what we say. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Yeah. Actually, um, the bitch that we talk about is the strong woman who stands up for herself and doesn't let anyone take advantage of her. Not men, women, anyone. She just stands up for what she believes in and goes after whatever it is that she wants. You're also real concerned about what's happening uh, to women, to people in this country, but you have a lot of women's issues in your music. Tell, right. us, tell us some examples. Well, on the album, we felt like um, for a long time there were women's songs out there that were so sugar-coated and they didn't really deal with a lot of the problems that women go through. Like if you, for example, if you caught your boyfriend cheating on you, um, you could listen to and Vogue say, hold on to your love, you know, or, and you don't really feel like that, or some other sweet, nice song, and that's nice and I love in Vogue and I love all of that music. You mean music, like Leslie you, Gore? You yeah. don't know who Leslie Gore is, right? <laughs> No, I don't. Another time zone. <laughs> it's my party and I'll cry if I want to. Never mind. All right, never mind. Some of the audience, we, we still remember, right? Okay, but you're saying you didn't want to, like, sugarcoat this stuff. Right, we, we, we just wanted, like, really street, hardcore bitch music. Okay. So what we wind up with is a song called Two Minute Brother. Right. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> well, um, <laughs> Two Minute Brother is a song about how um, you meet a guy and he talks to you about how great he is in bed and how he's so well endowed um, <laughs> and all the things that he's going to do to you and I'll make love to you all my night long and I could do this and you go to bed with him and it's two minutes. And it's two inches, and that's it. <laughs> and let me just let me just share with the group. That's the heavily edited version because you also, I mean, we're talking uh, language in there that makes your hair curl or right. some people's hair curl. Right. Um, well, we have two versions of it. We have a clean version of it that's for like video, radio, and. Um, stuff like that. And then we have the album version, which is with all the, the street stuff, the profanity and... Okay, now, I've asked the other women, let me ask you, why do you feel strongly about using the profanity? Um, a lot of times in our song, it um, helps get the point across a little more. Like, 
Well, a story that I'll use, sometimes you have to like come down to people's levels. Like one day I was in Penn Station, New York, and there was the, some guys were behind me and they were following me. It was like three teenage black guys and they're going, oh baby, oh this and that. And I had, I was trying to be a, a lady that day, you know, I had a dress and heels and so I turned around and I said, you know, it's not really nice for you guys to say that to me. So they just took that like a grain of salt, like, oh yeah, well F you and this and that. So they kept following me and they started and I turned around and I did like the, the black thing, you know, like I am a black young lady, you're black young men, you should respect me. They didn't go for that either. So, so finally I got to the subway and um, they just still kept on, so I took my shoes off and I said, look, MF, and I just started going into all my street thing and then they went, why do you have to do that? <laughs> why do you have to go there on us? So, you know, just sometimes you just have to come Be out, out there to really right. get heard. And that's kind of what the music, it's when you're at that point where you've had enough. Do you think your music is protest? What is your music? I mean, it's rap music, I understand that, right. and, and we don't want to really label folks here today, but I mean, do you see it as really trying to reach out on issues that make a difference in people's lives? I mean, is that the way you see it? Yeah, um, there are a lot of, to me, our music a lot of times is, it's therapeutic. You know, like sometimes you're in the mood where you want to hear something really radical, something strong, something that, like if I found my boyfriend cheating with my best girlfriend, at that point I really want to kill him. So, um, and her too. So I, instead of doing that, I'd rather listen to some music that'll make me feel like, yeah, that's how I feel. That's, that's, that's exactly how I feel right now. And it, makes me feel a little better. You also do a song called No Means No, right. which has to do with the whole issue of date rape. And date rape is something that I think pretty much, from my memory, all of you have tackled in your repertoires. Um, why did you feel so strongly about that issue? Because there were a lot of teenage girls that were um, experiencing date rape, and they didn't even realize that it was. Like, there were guys who would take them, like, to McDonald's and expect sex for it, and they would do it. <laughs> And then they come back. <laughs> I know it's sad. And they would come back and they wouldn't even realize that they'd been raped. No, we're not, isn't it? It's a very, very important issue, and what you're trying to do is shed some light on it in your own way. Right. Do you get a lot, I mean, do you get flack from people because of the language you use? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, some, you know, like, well, the, thanks to Tipper Gore, we have the parental advisory sticker on the. <laughs> Okay, but, but we do have the sticker on there, whether you like her or not, but she was responsible for getting that whole thing going. And, um, you know, if you want to listen to it, then you listen to it. If you don't and you think it's a little too harsh for you to listen to, then you have that right. Let me ask Christina last question before break. Do you get hassled because, I mean, your group is called the Red Hot Vulvas. Right, right there you lose some people. <laughs> I mean, let's, let's just say it flat out. No, but, but it's true. I mean, do you ever get any flack from people? I very rarely get flagged from people. Um, my family doesn't know what the name of my band is. They don't even know I'm in a band, actually. They think I'm a performer. And uh, my parents live in Italy, so it doesn't matter oh, to them. Oh, they'll never but... <laughs> know. Not a problem. But um, I very rarely get flagged. And if I do, I really don't care about it that much. OK. Going to take another break. Next, we're going to meet a woman who's the queen of the sexy rock video girl. She may be seen as a sex object, but she says she's a feminist. We'll be back.
talking with female rock and rap musicians who want to send out political messages through their music. Joining us now is Sam Phillips, who's appeared in 35 rock videos, and that's just this year alone. You are one of those women, and I'm sure you're recognized by a lot of folks, not those of us who remember <laughs> Leslie Gore, but others, right. um, who appears somewhat scantily clad in videos for groups like Van Halen right. and Iron Maiden right. and on and on and on. Right. Um, you say you're also a feminist. My question is, can you be both? Well, I don't see where in the rule book it says that a feminist cannot enjoy her own sexuality. I think being a woman is a very complex thing. And I think that you have to satisfy your intelligence, your sensuality. There's many different aspects that make up a woman. And I have no problem with voicing my opinions, which are very strong and, and come from my heart, yet enjoying who I am as a woman. I am a woman. Okay. And, and in reference to videos, videos isn't just what you see on the screen. A lot goes into the making of a video. I'm an actress, so I'm acting a role. I'm acting a character. It's all a vision. See, what a video is basically is a picture to go along with the words of a song, because a lot of people, either you can't understand the songs or you don't know what the, f you don't know what the hell they're talking about. <laughs> so when you have a video that depicts word by word what the song is, people have a visual and an audio to go, oh, OK, that song's about love or a failed relationship or about a man that wants to get his woman back and okay, but, but with so all, on and so forth. OK, <laughs> with all due respect, though, I mean, when you appear, um, you know, and I, I'm not taking a shot at you here, no, but I mean, okay. if, you, if there are people who say that the sexism that's prevalent in rock music and MTV and we right. see, you know, these women get flack for using bad words or dirty right. words and, and making an outrageous statement, and right. yet there's a lot of ugly stuff that goes on on MTV. Now, you were in a video where you appeared in a G-string. Which one was that? Was that the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I did not I don't seem to remember that one. What? No, okay, it well... it could be. I mean, this no. is what I understand. But okay. anyway, the point okay. is you were, you were, you know, wearing a G-string oh, and this pay-per-view like thing. Girl, girls of Rock videos. All right. right, okay. A lot of times, it's in any entertainment industry, you go in with your values and your principles and you know where your line is, will you, where you will not cross it. A lot of times, especially in videos, the terms of the agreement are worked out. We're booking Samantha. She's going to be doing this and doing that. You say yes. You get on the, on the set, and the director's like, look, I think just because of the shapes and the body language and the lighting, if you have a G-string, we won't show anything. And creatively and artistically, I'm very much of both. And I agree with them. I agree that, yes, it, it looks beautiful. I think nudity is beautiful. Nudity right. has been around since the beginning so of time. So you don't feel you're being exploited? No, because I feel that exploit, exploitation happens when you're unaware of a situation that you're thrown into. And this is your choice. And I consciously okay. choose to do my jobs. And damn it, I make a lot of money. I have a good time. I got to tell you, a criticism that I get a lot is people say, don't you think that you induce people to go out and rape women and when they watch your sexy videos, does, doesn't that plant an image in their mind that they want to go out and cause harm to women? And I get that a lot. And my point of view, and you might not all agree with me, I feel it is a lot healthier for some sick psychopath to be sitting inside taking care of whatever business that he has to in his home instead of, no, listen to me. No, I'm very serious. I'm very serious. Say, wait, let me finish. Say that you have a man that's a rapist, and he obviously has some sexual dysfunction. Now, if he has the availability to porno magazines or watching sexy videos, God, God help him, he might not go out on the street the point is, and, then, okay. and then rape a woman there Violence, if he's dealing okay. with his sexuality not, in his house. This is another show. I mean, you're trying to make a point, and right. it's a good point, but the point is that violence against women is not about sex, it's about power and aggression. Okay, so, okay. exactly, um, exactly. Exactly. You know, what you're doing, though, is that you see, you know, you see some meaning in what you do, and yet there are people who would say that what we see on MTV is this sort of irresponsible promoting, go out and get the gusto, you too can have a woman like this. It's but not I, pre I, it's I, not about responsibility. Okay, I have one point to make, which is if anybody watches MTV as of late, it's not so much anymore women in videos, it's a lot more performance videos, which means it's the bands themselves. I think a lot of times, back when videos started, the bands or the production or the, the management companies were sort of insecure about how their guys looked. So to keep the interest and to keep people watching, throw in a couple of sexy girls. But now I think the strength of the I think music. MTV really does perpetuate a lot of myths about.
people in general, women explicitly. And uh, I think we need to, I think what we're doing is independent of that. This is a corporate rock, really, that you right. support. You're in it for money, well, fame. Well, that's, that's the thing. And I've, for, you know, a certain amount of, you, you know, you're furthering your career. Okay, but I think it's been unacceptable, really, for women to be on stage and angry and talking about things that they have to go through. You know, I think, I think I there is a difference in that way. I of MTV and not see one woman play guitar. It's, yeah. you know, crap. <laughs> no, it's, well, they don't and have enough women bands on MTV. They don't have, they don't, the bottom line but is But it's not like we don't exist. Uh, absolutely, I am with you. The body is beautiful, I agree with that. But the body is beautiful for MTV, especially if you're tall, thin, and blonde. They didn't ask me to be in the Women of Rock video. No, let me tell you something. <laughs> I, I gotta I tell you something. No. I, I'll, I'll, I'll answer that one. A very good friend of mine who I work with often, her name is Becky Mullen. She is a full figured girl. I mean, she's a big girl, beautiful, but she's not a rail. And I think in terms of women today, the tide is changing on what society accepts or what they designate as being pretty. Oh, no, that's what? the audience. The audience just turn. What? Just turn. We are going to take a break. We're going to get to you, audience. Yes, they have a lot to say. We'll be back. <laughs> and rap music, and you have a comment, I think. Yeah, I just, and I don't really know how to say this, but without sounding cruel, but you know, you stated that maybe a psychopath or a rapist or whatever may see your video um, and not go well, out I and rape not. somebody. And like the other four women up there also, with your music, you're saying, you know, use the example of a girlfriend getting really mad and wanting to hear some hard music, you know, about her boyfriend cheating on her. But what happens if they're listening to this and they really are this mad and they go out and they do something about it? They're crazy. <laughs> but it happens. They're crazy. Yeah, I don't, I don't you know think what? people you... just listen to music and just go out and do it. That's like oh, saying I, I anybody who saw a Terminator is just going to go out and start well, shooting people. No, that, if you're sick and you're just going to, if you're sick, and you're just gonna go out and rape or kill somebody, that's because you're just a sick, sick. individual. I don't think I right? agree with that, but. <laughs> All right, go ahead, make you know, I just here. think that, it's, you know, that it does happen. I have seen it happen before, and I'm just wondering, by you doing this, do you feel that but it would. Can I, can I add, oh. I was gonna say, for the one psychopath that's gonna listen <clears throat> to their music or watch my video or listen to my album or whatever the case, there, we touch in our own individual way an enormous amount of people. And I cannot be in control of, of, okay, of everybody in society. Saying. That's okay, not my okay. responsibility. You can't talk without a mic. Stand by here. Let me get to this man. Uh, first of all, Jane, I wanted to say that I watch your show all the time and I enjoy it very much. <laughs> Thanks so much. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm so embarrassed. Move along. OK. OK, what I wanted to say was I agreed with Leslie, what she said before about the 60s. Uh, that's what Bob Dylan did. He described his views and his expressions during in his lyrics. And this is what these women are doing today. And what uh, I'd just like to say finally that I do not think that these women are anti-men. I think that they're pro-women. And I commend them for that. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to direct this to Sam. I'm sorry. I'd like to direct this to Sam. Um, I'm an avid watcher of MTV. I enjoy it very much. And my kids also enjoy it. They love the music. And I, I appreciate what you said about music and everything. But you're one of the reasons why I don't let my children watch MTV, because you flaunt yourself around. Well, that's your opinion. And I respect your opinion. You know, what can I say? I'm not going to argue with you. I think everybody has a right to their own opinion. OK. I think she's right. Everybody does have a right to their own opinion. And you say, you know, you shouldn't let your kids watch. If you don't want to let them watch it, they don't. They are pro-women. They're standing up for what they believe in. And they're doing it to themselves. They want to do it to themselves. Let them do what they want. Okay. Thank you. Who else has a comment or question? You have something. Stand up. I'd like to know what uh, Christina's boyfriend thinks of what she believes in. Good question. Your boyfriend's... We should, should we ask him? We don't want to put him on the spot. Should we ask him? 
I don't want to. Are we negotiating on the air here? I really. Is that okay with met, you? Okay, hold on, stand by. We actually met um, that way. He saw one of my shows. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Okay. The question is, what's your reaction to what Christina does? Oh, I think it's great, and I wish more women had the attitude she has. I think um, she's more interesting and more exciting than, say, the women I see on MTV. Okay. <laughs> Do you ever feel, um, and I, I go back to this because people do have a concern about, do you ever feel that the language or, is a barrier? Do you ever feel that she's misunderstood, that she's not heard? No, I think the people that come to those shows hear that sort of language all over, and it doesn't bother anyone or turn anyone off. Okay. Thank you very much for being here. We appreciate it. Stand up for me. Uh, yes, I don't know verbatim the rock lyrics of the woman up there or in detail Samantha's uh, work, but... In the final analysis, you know, freedom can't be abridged by a sensitivity or defensive passion. So I really have no, really, too many reservations about them expressing themselves in, in that way. Okay, I'm sure they're happy to hear that. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes. I just want to say that um, the type of audience I feel that listens to the music you portray and the language you use are the people that you're lashing out against. Because the individuals that are for your music and listen to that type of language are the type of people that are going to be harassing you in subway stations or um, harassing you in those type of ways. Those are the only people that are going to listen to the vulgar language and you're wrong. that yeah, type of wrong. stuff. You're wrong. OK, that's the way she feels. So that's her point of view. You say she's wrong, Tanisha? No, uh, people. Everybody listens to all kinds of music whenever they want to. It doesn't, it's not necessarily like um, all people that hang out in the subways don't listen to rap music, and they're not necessarily the ones who are doing all the mugging and the robbing and the raping and all of that stuff like that. People listen to all, it has not, you're, I just don't agree with what She's you just said. She's back here. Well, well, now what? <laughs> <laughs> but somebody like myself who isn't harassing people or making comments, so you don't listen I'm not going to gonna sit there and listen to that type of music with the vulgarity or you know the strong language. I'm not going to ever hear the message you're portraying because I'm not going to sit there and listen hear my to that message. music. I'm no. here, yeah, because can I didn't know what I was coming laughing. here to watch. <laughs> Wait, can I just say something? There's, a, there's something that we did not address here. What I'm saying is that someone like myself is not going to take the time to listen to that type of music. Okay, so let me say something in answer to I, you. The people I feel are going to listen to that type of music are the I people that you're you. trying to get away from because... Okay. Okay. Can I, can I just say something there. to you? What we failed to talk about here is I'm in the process of recording a rap album. It's a very... Don't laugh. Thank you. It's a very feminist, pro-choice, anti-censorship, anti-child abuse, it's a very statement and it's a very political album. I do not use profanities. So hopefully, between all the women up here on this panel, for whatever messages that we all have, we all have our individual ways of reaching every one of these people. You said you don't use profanities on, in your album? No. What did you tell me backstage? What did I say backstage? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> you just told me backstage. Yes. I'm not trying to embarrass you no, or anything no, like that. Please, but you're backstage, not. you just told me that you had an album and you and somebody okay. said, "Are you gonna say? Okay. Are you gonna say that, Sam?" No, you're taking half of a conversation. That's how I originally it? how I originally came up with an idea to do an Excuse album. Excuse me, let me just cut you off because okay. we didn't hear the conversation backstage. Okay. Simple yes or no. Okay. Will there be profanity in your no, rap music? No, there will not. Thank you. You have a question here. Yes, I do. Um, I just think it's really sad that in reference to the mess this world is in, um, I think you're just making it worse. I mean, I'm 32 years old, and you mentioned you're 33. Mm -hmm. And I grew up with the same type of music that you did. And I, I personally enjoy soft rock. And I think I've turned out to be quite a good person. And I respect people. I respect property. I respect the things that need to be respected. And I, I feel bad for my children that are going to have to grow up listening to this type well, of music. Well, first of all, I think a lot of our music has been misrepresented here because I have one song that has profanity in it. I have songs about anorexia that your daughter might be interested in listening to. It's put in a funny context. It's about Brooke Shields' lettuce commercial in which she says, mmm, so satisfying, you know? Great, I'm always satisfied when I eat iceberg, you know? I'm, I'm so full. Um, 
and I think we are all so, being lumped yeah. together here, just to yeah. interrupt, that we're being lumped together here as people who are utilizing profanity to such an extreme that that it's overwhelming, you know, that's that's not what I'm doing. I wrote a song called Water Cuts My Hands, which I think you've made reference to, and it's about uh, walking around and feeling, looking at colors, you know, checking out the weather, just feeling quite myself and not always, oh, I'm a woman, how am I being perceived, you know, am I be being perceived as a sex object as I'm just walking down a street. From out of nowhere, a guy comes up to me and says, come with me, I know you like to you know, okay. I'm, I didn't say it, I'm repeating it. I find it, you shake your head. Well, I wasn't very happy with it either. But I think people need to know but that this is the type of... you're contributing. How is she contributing, though? She's no, whoever, whoever is, is the, the lyrics that they're using, maybe not her particularly, but some, some of the others, the lyrics that they're using, I'm and, and there's no me. need for it. I mean, no, there's, there's, there's a need, need for it. There's a definite need for it. But sometimes you it. cannot control children when they start getting access to the television Well, you cannot radio. control your I children anyway. I my children every minute of every day. They're yeah, infants yeah. now. I watch them. But when they're going to be 10, 11, 12 years old, I'm not going to be able to watch them every minute of every day. Come on, they're going to Another break, up. folks. We'll get to you when we come back. We'll be back. Okay. We'll be back. Thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to say that I don't mean to be hostile to the woman here who has a problem with this kind of music, but it kind of gives the impression that these kids are raised in a room with a television until they're 18 years old and they see nothing else and they see nobody else and they don't have any other interaction with their parents or their families or anything like that. If you talk to your children about what they see, that's so much more helpful than actually keeping them from the rest of the real this world. This woman's levitating out of her chair. Can you sort of lean in here and we'll get friendly? All right. Stand by here. Me, we'll all move in together. This is going to be very cozy. Okay, you don't you don't buy what she's saying. No, I'm sorry, I don't. I have three children at home, and they're 14. Twins are 14 months, and I have a three-month-old baby. Okay, I have to deal with them, and I watch every move that they make. Okay, and I talk to my children. My husband is here. We have what is called a normal family today, and I want to raise them. Go ahead, go ahead and laugh. Go ahead and laugh. 
because that's the reason we have these problems today. And I hope that I'm able to raise my children as my mother raised my, my sister and my brothers with the, with the respect that you need. Okay, I grew up with different type of music. As, I don't know, she, she mentioned about the type of music that we grew up with, and I've, I heard the same music that she did. And we obviously live well, a different okay, life. Wait you a know, second, you're I telling me because I grew up I listening to Barry Manilow that I'm not a bad that. person? <laughs> I understand that, but, but how can you draw that's like a, you know, this incredible conclusion you're because making? If you look at the, the artists that were from in, in the time, in the 70s and the 80s, it's a different type of a, of a, of a well, music than well, we all today. grew up on that. Back then, everybody didn't agree with everything ahead, that they did back then. Then they go through a lot of controversy back then, too. Well, it was like, you know, all right, at one right, time folks, it was like, um, Different generations. I mean, Elvis was looked at as bad. Um, the Beatles. The Beatles. Yeah, I was crying. Exactly. Rolling Stones. Okay. All right. We're going to respect your right to disagree here. You're not going to agree. Go ahead. Stand up. Something. Something. I don't agree with that woman at all, but I do hear a lot of rap music that is very hateful towards women. It says they are, they're all bitches, they should be murdered. I hear this played in parks. I hear little kids listening to it. And, you know, should they be listening to that? I mean, I you think, the music like that wasn't produced in the 60s and 70s. I just think that they have a right to listen to it if their parents want them to listen to it, if that's what they want to listen to. I make the music that I want to make. You and they have a right to listen to that? Did if they, they, they want to listen to that music and if their parents or whatever agree with that's the kind of music that the they can listen be to, then it's okay. I, I don't have... I, Sorry, she's given her me. position. Thanks very much for the comments. Actually, Stand I'd up. like to jump in about Go something, ahead. and it still relates to what you said. Um, you've never seen our band, so you don't really know what we're about. However, Red Sox, family entertainment, we're in Boston here. Last year, there was a big scandal because in the bleachers, men were throwing around a sex doll. Now, people bring their, their kids to those games, and um, when a group of men protested this, they were laughed at by a lot of the audience. They were laughed at because they were seen as effeminate or something, as if that was bad. You know, I'm sorry, batting a sex doll around a stadium with a lot more people than will ever see my show, I hope, um, is really a lot worse of a crime. Now, why wasn't that telling? Why aren't you angry about that? <laughs> what happened? Okay. You should know about it. Okay. You should. I you totally the papers, disagree you know with about these things, and you don't get all worried about us swearing in a couple of songs. I totally disagree with. This man right over here. I mean, I, I agree. No, no one should be murdered because they're a woman or raped or anything like that. But then you're talking about pr promoting censorship, and yeah, exactly. you know, you just—I mean—you do that, and you're you're losing freedom, which is everything that we stand for, and exactly. everything we've ever fought for. Uh, that was my wife. Uh, We—that's <laughs> not why I stood up. My stepson, Rosalie's son has been listening to rap music since he's been about 10. I hate it. I just, I just don't like it. My parents didn't like the music I listened to who were sitting here. That's okay, too. But the difference is Joshua comes home and tells us the lyrics, and there's a thing called conversation. And when you talk with your children, I don't care what they talk about. Exactly. You give your perspective, and some intelligence comes across from that. The same way these women are singing what they want to sing and saying what they want to say, I may not, disagree, I may not agree with what they do or what they, what they sing their, their styles with profanities. But when Josh comes to me and I hear a tape playing in his room and we talk about it for a minute, I think that makes all the difference in the world as opposed to him just going on his own I and thinking about thanks it. Thanks for the comment. Think, Jean, go I ahead. Think we're, I might say, digressing somewhat into a situation where we're just bantering back and forth on the basis of language. You know, is this word acceptable? Is this not? I think there are a lot of other issues that we all address within our music. Sexism, we've discussed. There are homeless people. There's a poverty rate in this country that is phenomenal. There are people out of work. There are a lot of problems, and people seem to want to go on a lot about, you know, should this be allowed? Should this person be allowed to say this? I think people need to start communicating about the very basis of this country and the direction that they might want to take it, because change is happening worldwide. And I think it's necessary to understand that you can influence the process of change. That you can't just sort of sit and say, well, we'll watch TV and we'll wait for change to happen. I think people need to start working on a lot of different issues. Okay. I have two things to say. First, about the profanity. I think a lot of it is generational, and I think certain people at certain age groups have a real problem with it, and younger people sometimes don't. But secondly, I think, Sam, what you do is acceptable because you're seen as an attractive female in a non-threatening position in an all-male rock video. But as far as the other artists go, I'd like to know how are you doing? Are you 
signed? Are you with record companies? Are you all getting radio airplay? I'm personally um, not interested in being on a major label. I'm very happy I'm on an independent label based in Washington in, in Olympia and I'm it's called Def K Jam. Records. I think what we do is very encouraging for other women to get up and, and say and very powerful things. Definitely. And I think it's been unacceptable for far too long yeah. for women to appear to be angry. Yeah, and I think more women need to going really into be the mainstream we're just creating our own reality and where we can do what we want and not have to, you know, um, sell out and we can just be really be really free to express ourselves. I think that really almost runs contrary to this sort of American dream of, you know, you squish down everybody below you as much as you can into the grime so you can like social climb and create your own, you know, mega wealth empire. And that's not what I'm about. And I think a lot of people who are interested in alternative music, feminism, anarchism, they're just trying to create something. It's not all negative. There's a lot of really positive, strong messages coming forth from a lot of younger people, a lot of women, a lot of people who really can see that things are taking shape in a different way. Yeah, that oh. you do have control over your own life. I mean, you, you're not completely. I think um, that it's everybody's right to express. <laughs> I'm sorry, they're, they're laughing because I'm trying, you're, oh. you know, I'm listening to you talk and they're trying to go into a break here. We so okay. let's just, we we're going to just stop. keep on talking through the break and we'll be back. <laughs> For free tickets to our show, call 617-433-4352. Say. Yes, not to pick on any one person, but the girl Christina, while you were speaking at the beginning of the show, what really bothered me is you're sitting there saying that people bother you when you're out, in a, you know, wherever the subway, but yet you walked in here tonight and you certainly weren't dressed like you didn't want anybody to notice you. You have a hat on that you can't miss. Half of your certain parts are there for us to see. Well, but yet, let me finish, but yet mm -hmm. what you... And then you're mad because men are going to say something to you? When you I show your body, ma'am, they're going to talk about it. I'm on Women TV today. Women should be able to wear whatever <laughs> they want, no, no, whenever yeah. they want, and walk and go anywhere. I don't believe that. That might be true, but you have to... I'm, I'll go along with that, but you have to accept that men, if they're going to look at you, if they want to think something, they well, also have the same the right. You guys have to see it. it. They have the right to say it. Put the responsibility on them. Put the responsibility All on the I'm man for their comments. She's, she's, she's not baby. No, she's not provoking them. I'm not picking them. on you, but you at the beginning of the show were bitching about you know we're not being able to sit on the subway and nobody bothering you. They're if you're not babies, and I don't dress this way on the subway. I work in a library at Harvard. Oh, some of them know it doesn't. One at a time here, folks. Yeah. Some of them know it doesn't, but when you're on the stage. How are you dressed? Yeah. Do you dress when more? When I'm on the stage, I dress like this. And I dress like this because I don't dress like this normally. It's, it's liberating. It's fun. Now, what if and a guy tries to grab not? you? He's why down. He's I in the front to? of the stage. He tries to grab you. Is it his fault or is it because you're hanging I in his face? I will punch him out. OK, I'm going to stop there. <laughs> Stand up for me. <laughs> yeah, I'll be very honest. Um, when I first came here, I thought I was going to find a bunch of women you know, trying to get attention, but I will say that when I go home, I would much rather see you three or four women on, you know, speak with my 15-year-old daughter about your music than I would about anything on MTV, which is totally mindless <laughs> to me. I think, wait a minute. We're doing a, there's, there's a lot of MTV, like, bashing here. I don't know how much you've watched MTV, but have you seen, like, the, the show they do on Sundays where they brought the seven people into the loft and they're all different yeah, types real, of people? Real, that's real very life. socially responsible, so you, you can't you make, make generalizations. Generalize. Always I mean, dangerous, very good point. Wait, stand up. Um, Christina's mother mentioned something, or Christina mentioned something about her, her parents not knowing about her group in, in Italy. I'm curious as to, as to whether some of the other women's families know about their groups and how they, how they feel about it. My Leslie, mother does. Tanisha? Parents, yeah. um, at first, my father didn't exactly like it, and my mother went along with my father. But then when I explained to them what the music was talking about, my mom said, well, guess I'm a bitch with a problem, too. And, <laughs> you know, my father, he saw, like, the, the publicity in the family. He's like, oh, my princess, look at what she's doing <laughs> now, you know. So they're behind me Leslie, now. Yeah. Well, really my father, you know, always wanted me to be some sort of engineer or something. <laughs> and um, exactly, you know, maybe what he was. But um, I think after I've, you know, persevered and, like, really kept at it and um, 
really, you know, put my heart and soul into it. He's he's a little bit excited now about it. Just actually, a little. I think my parents would wouldn't care. They're in their 80s. Um, and they're Italian, they live in Italy, and I grew up in a working class <laughs> Italian background. My father always told me I could be anything I wanted to be and that I was just as good as the boys. And I think that influenced me profoundly. I think it's a little hard to explain bilingually what I'm about, so I don't try that much. I don't want to, there's no use making them anxious. Someday maybe. Someday, Someday. maybe. My okay. mom always came to my shows too. Your mom comes yeah. to your shows? Oh, yeah. Okay, and Sam's grandmother's here. We'll talk to her after the break. We'll be back. <laughs> If your mother's romantic behavior towards men upsets you, call 1-800-370-2712. Stay at the beautiful Bostonian Hotel in historic Faneuil Hall in downtown Boston. You have a comment. And I just want to say, this one on the end here, the way she's dressed, and that's all for her act, supposedly, and yet you're really coming down on Sam because she acts when she's in her G-string on MTV. I didn't come down on her. If you were listening, all I said was, uh, beautiful thin blondes are acceptable on MTV, but someone like me isn't. Um, so, yeah, right, maybe well, you could why, a comment what do you, on that. I don't understand what you mean, someone like you isn't. I don't only see tall, thin blondes on MTV. There are other... There are. People there are a lot on. of tall and other girls. Well, but the thing that I'm trying to say is you're coming down on her because I don't of the see way myself as coming down. I wanted to act, make that point. And you dress the same way in your act. She was making a, a point that in society, if women look like models like Christy Brinkley, like Sam, they're sort of, you know, that's so that's accepted. And if you're not, if you don't, if you're outside we that box, Roseanne Barr. Roseanne Barr. Good point. Roseanne Arnold. Now, okay. Exactly. Go ahead. Stand up for me. Well, first of all, I think Sam is definitely contradicting herself by saying, number one, she's a feminist, and then allowing these video well, producers to explain her body First of all, this isn't even fair, because I haven't even gotten to speak object. yet properly to explain what the hell I'm even doing on this show. Okay, it has nothing ahead. to do with videos. I'm in the process right now of recording a rap album. And the, the whole thing just, the whole thing where Tanisha and I just had an altercation earlier was we were discussing my ideas originally for my album. I wanted to make an album of girl talk, of girls just getting nasty, like an Andrew Dice Clay for the guys I would be for the females. I got a record deal. And then I thought, with this amazing opportunity, why am I going to waste it talking bullshit? when I can actually say things that I feel. And yes, I don't mind being naked or being half-dressed on MTV, which I can't show nudity anyway. At the same time, I mean, I feel that it's my right to have an abortion if I want to. I feel very strongly on certain issues. Okay, we're so gonna... with that, with that, I decided to do an album about my views and okay. not just fluff. Sam's grandmother's gonna end this show. What do you think? Sam's grandmother. Could all you stand right, up yeah. for me here? Well, you've been listening to all this. You've heard a lot of different opinions. What do you want to tell us? As a woman of my age, and I'm over 70, I've lived through a lot and seen a lot. I will say one thing on my granddaughter's behalf. Everything she's done, she's done for herself. Neither her father nor her mother helped to get where she is. She was an international model. She could have had everything she wanted, lived in Europe, went to Japan, did all these things, but wanted another career. She's not doing anything by exposing her body. She's not selling her body. She's showing her body. Wearing a G-string is not as bad as showing a pregnant belly on the front on the front of a magazine. Thanks a lot. Appreciate you being here. We thank our guests. We're out of time. We thank you for joining us. We'll see you back here next time. Until then, have a great day. Take care. Out of time.